I'm a, a geologist by training. I do a lot of paleoclimate reconstruction using corals and deep sea sediments. I work primarily in Fiji and uh, Indonesia, Samoa, Tonga, South Pacific. We reconstructed intermediate water temperature change in the Pacific. Intermediate waters are between roughly 500 and 1,000 meters down using sediment cores from Indonesia, which we collected in 2003 with my colleagues Jaya Rosenthal and Delia Oppo. And what it shows is that the intermediate waters have been cooling over the last 10,000 years, about two degrees of cooling, which is a large degree of cooling, up until about 1600 or so, uh, what we call a little ice age. And since then, they started warming slightly. Uh, what's interesting about this work is that um, intermediate waters today have been warming quite a lot in the last 50 years. And we know they've been, we can measure this with thermometers. And the rate of warming today is about 15 times what it was ever in the past, in the last 10,000 years. And so the oceans act as, act as a large sort of uh, capacitor, you might say. They absorb heat and release heat and seem to buffer the Earth's global climate system. So that's what's new about our results, is this whole temporal context for the most recent warming of intermediate waters. And the other piece of the puzzle is that the sediments in Indonesia accumulate very rapidly because we're near all these land masses, and that allows us to get more samples per time going down core, whereas a lot of sediments everywhere else in the Pacific are, accumulate very slowly or they're in poor, uh, they've been dissolved partially by corrosive bottom waters. So you can't just do this everywhere. We can only, and we did it uh, able here because of the unique sediment record there. I do a lot of paleoclimate reconstruction using corals um, on different time scales. The corals are quite fascinating because they have annually, annual rings in them. And like a tree which grows out, these corals grow upwards. And some of the corals we have have annual rings that go back four or five hundred years. So a four hundred year old coral would be about four meters high, the ones we work on. And so we collect the core out of the top, we cut the core in half, we slab it and x-ray it, and they grow about a centimeter a year. And we to give you some idea of how we work in the lab, we sample these every millimeter with a little drill. So a four meter core drilled every millimeter would be 4,000 samples. And we can analyze about 30 samples a day in the lab. So 4,000 divided by 30 is a lot of days in the lab. And it's a, such a huge amount of lab time and money to analyze these things. But at the end of the day, the, the fact that you have this annual result chronology is enormous because it allows you to ask all sorts of questions about climate variability in, in terms of El Nino events and century scale tr trends and correlating from one to another. You don't have that luxury using deep sea sediments because the age models are not accurate enough. We're trying to use corals as a, to extend the instrumental record because we can calibrate them against instrumental data in the last 30 to 40 to 50 years. You might be surprised how little instrumental data there is actually going back even before 1960. During the world wars, there's almost none none low water temperature data, World War II and one. So we're trying to extend the instrumental record with the coral records because we can um, cross calibrate them back in time. And so our longest record published so far goes back to 1607 from Fiji. And the, once we finish the Samoa record, it'll probably go back to 1500s or so.